by now we have discussed the basics of Patanjali Yoga, in particular what I call three of the four pillars of this course. Now, as you know, yoga is yoga chitta vetti nayod. So chitta and where do the vettis on chitta come from? So that we have discussed from Sankhya, that Ahanka is the entity of our aggregate mind that has all the past data and our self, the consciousness, has three powers to know, to feel the experience and to act. So we go through these three dimensional processing, knowing, feeling, and doing. And once I had know any of this, I have felt an experience and I have performed a task its copy is automatically made in Anka. So that next time I can make the FNs very easily. So there is a proper catalog library there. Of course, we tend to forget also data that we don't use much, but otherwise we maintain this library. And this is having data from previous life and life after life is called Adhyat. So that was Ahankar that somehow was not understood well in the modern times. But the Ishu Akeshna, author of Sankhya Kaika, he knew it. And prior to that, we have seen Vyas commenting on a particular Yoga Sutra. They knew it. So this information was somehow lost in the last few centuries. Then comes what is chitta, that was also unfortunately is missing, and that we have seen from Meghantu, which is very, very authoritative, on the words that are mentioned in the Vedas. So Meghantu says, chitta is our buddhi when it is very much in a calm state and can receive the, can become enlightened. So chitta is a very latent state of buddhi that we have seen. And last week we have seen that Patanjali is using a very unusual flowchart when he writes the book. So he first has the entire humanity in mind for their good, for their welfare. He is writing that book of Yoga Sutta. And he knows the three categories that we know as such. <coughs> Devata, Manushya and Rakshas. Manushya and Rakshas are doing karma for, because we get some results, we get some reward. Manushya is a good person who is doing always dharma, the right thing. But there are some people who fall in temptations they are not so good people. But then, this is the beauty of the Vedic philosophy. It guides us towards a category that is Devta, where he does the dharma, good karma, but without expecting any reward. As if he surrenders, he does everything on behalf of Ishwar. So, just like that child number one, who just did it, because his mother expected. So when you have such a relationship with that Ishwar, you just do good karma in the world because that is what is expected from you as if you have surrendered to it. And that is what we will see is the meaning of Ishwar Panidhan. And that actually what is Omkara Japa, you know, when you are in love with somebody, when you are in deeply in love with somebody, you are always having that person in your mind, is it not? That's what is Omkara Jap. So we'll see in Yoga Sutta, Ishwar Panidhan means nothing but Tad Japas Tadad Bhav. And Ishwar Panidhan is one who is leading his life 
dedicated his life to him that every moment he is doing something on behalf of Ishwar. He has dedicated everything for Ishwar. So now we have the basis of all, of course, there were four pillars. We know these three pillars. The Anka is the storehouse of all the past data. Chit is the latent state of buddhi. I am always watching this buddhi, the screen. I can use it at a high potential, intellectual thinking. But when I sit for meditation, I want to calm it down. And further, I want to remove all, even all the images at the Chitta Vritti. And third, we have seen is Patanjali is prescribing three prescriptions. Yoga, Kriya Yoga and Ashtanga. This we discussed in this recap based on the karma. The good karma, bad karma and good but without any expectation in the world. But this is now translated by Patanjali in the terms of Klesh. So we'll see all this. The first one, Klesh is very minute, tiny. The Sanskrit term is very similar, Tanu. Tanu sounds like tiny. The person on the highest category has Klesh in very tiny levels. Those tiny levels can be burnt out. And then he doesn't have to be in the cycle of birth and death. Because we come in the place because of those deposits called place in our mind. Now the second category is the one who has place and with, under the influence of place he is doing worldly actions but he doesn't do anything wrong. So place is there is significant but it has not become Contaminant Hello, in buddhi. Buddhi is pure. This buddhi is pure. But there no, are no, 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 no. they are I will urge no, no. everybody to be mute so that there is no background sound. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of we have discussed from the karma point of view, the category one, nishkam karma, category two, sakam karma, but dharm. Category three, sakam karma, but they may fall into the traps of temptations. But Patanjali uses another terminology in terms of clash. We will see what clash is. Some sort of deposits in our mind that we have discussed last week, in particular, Rag and Dvesh, likes and dislikes, that put us in the wheel of the universe. The birth and death become a cyclic, just like day and night are cyclic. But Patanjali is using the terminology of three categories from another parameter, namely Klesh. Here Klesh is tiny, here Klesh is significant, but the person is still having pure buddhi. His intellect is pure. He doesn't cheat others. He doesn't harm others. Now the third category, flesh is significant and he falls into the trap of the temptations so much that even his buddhi has become impure. So Patanjali's term is Ashuddhi. For him, he talks about Ashtang Yoga. For the top layer, he talks about first chapter Yoga. Second chapter is Kriya Yoga, which is an appendix to yoga. This is not full prescription. This Kriya Yoga qualifies the person to become category one. And then he can follow the teachings of yoga. This he has altogether different prescriptions. Now we'll see fourth pillar. And uh, when we are at the early part of the third chapter of Patanjali Yoga. So today we begin Patanjali's Yoga Darshan. So I am sharing two slides with you together. 
on my left side is original patanjali yog sutra that i have shared with you that has sanskrit devanagari original statements followed by roman transliteration on the right side that i may refer to once in a while is that also i have sent to you but that is commentary on patanjali yog by vyas like this is on the first statement first statement is atha yoga anushasana but vyas makes a long uh, commentary unfortunately this is only in sanskrit without roman transliteration even if i read something in sanskrit i will translate every word into english so here begins patanjali's first statement chapter 1 first statement atha yoga anushasanam so here at means here i begin he is announcing the title of his book as yog but he is very humble enough to say anushasanam the knowledge has been coming to since time immemorial and i am merely following it so he is not taking full credit he doesn't even write his name in his book but we know it this is book written by patanjali anushasanam and also it means the entire book has what is called anuvitti the term yog will always be there in what i say henceforth his next statement is but here i want to show from vyas commentary this is one minor small sentence yoga samadhi so you will hear one term indeed the chapter one has a title not mentioned here the title original title is samadhi path so samadhi is a term that bears the title of chapter one and you will hear this quite often as we proceed further what vyas is saying is the two terms yoga and samadhi are synonyms yoga literally means union so it is my it is union of my tiny consciousness with that supreme consciousness so that is the word meaning of yog and then he says that same meaning is reflected in the term samadhi this term has a root is dha or dharan as if he has accepted me in his fold so if you prove that you deserve it he takes you in his fold and that is what is the union and that is what is samadhi next vyas is saying that samadhi or yog they are synonyms cha sarvabhomas chittasya dharma so the word chit is coming which otherwise is coming in the second statement here what is saying is chit has a natural characteristics of has a characteristic can attain this characteristic what is called yoga samadhi and in all its possible states so this will be surprising to many of you but you will understand what it means then he writes there are five times here kshipta mood vikshipta ekagya nirudham iti chitta bhumaya so the term bhumi means the ground so chit is a ground so you know the the analogy is like this chit some seeds are planted there that is our sanskar and sanskar gives rise to a vritti then vritti chit vritti becomes bhog vritti you know in certain circumstances when you feel the experience and that gives rise to pain or pleasure pleasure or pain so the analogy goes like the chit is the ground soil some seeds are planted there that is namely the sanskar and in time it gives rise to that is called karmasha and karm vipak all the karm give rise to its reward and then 
the Purush, the owner of the chit, tastes the fruit and it is sweet or bitter, whatever it is, that is pleasure and pain of the experience. So in the analogy of the soil, seed and the plant and the fruits, they make the seed again. Again, this is a cyclic phenomenon, seeds and the and the kernels that germinate. So that is another analogy. Okay, let's not go into that detail now. So that was, I was just saying, all the grounds, all types of soil, all types of chit. Then he says there are five types. Kshipt means very flickering mind, like a child's mind, and sometimes our mind is also very flickering. Mudam, when it is dormant, like we are in deep sleep, even if somebody is telling us something that may be very meaningful, but I don't quite get it. Vikshipt is a, not quite flickering. So V is uh, slightly opposite. It is flickering, but with some effort, I can, I can concentrate on something. Like at this point, our mind is in this state. You know, you are picking up what I am saying, but once in a while your mind goes here and there. That is what is our typical when we are so-called in alert state. That was number third state. Fourth is ekagyam. That means one-pointed state. So that is actually, of course, in our in general terminology, if somebody is reading book very attentively, we will say he is one-pointed. But uh, this is a very specific meaning in Patanjali Yoga. One-pointed state means now the chit has only one vritti. So that is what will be our dhyan. So that is corresponding to meditation. So ekagya avastha is very demanding. And as we will see it. Finally, the nirudha means it is a blank state. Chitta is blank, doing nothing. So these are chitta bhumaya. These are the possible five states he is characterizing chitta as. Flickering, dormant, not so much flickering, is working mode. One pointed absolutely in meditation. And nirudha, that we will say is deep meditation when it is chitta with the nayodha. You can see the word nayodha is similar to the word nayodha here. When chit has been subdued thoroughly, it is in the nayodha state. Okay, there are many more details, but we won't go into it. I want to show you what Bhoj is writing, who is the, another respectable commentator. I think he writes it in the context of Second chapter, what I want to show in the second statement, what I want to show you at this point. Or could it be first? Sorry, I. I'm sorry, taking time to, to bring out what I wanted to show you. It's not in first. Not even in second. Sorry about that. Yeah, it is in the, sorry, the thing I, uh, yeah, it is in the second state. I was not seeing it properly. Okay. But this is very significant statement. So might as well.
Okay. This is coming related to second statement, but I might as well show you here. Chitta bhumi nam sarva prani nam dharma. No, he is using a word sarva prani nam. Okay, I am sorry, I missed out a very important point. Why I showed that by Vyas. I am sorry about this. Coming back to what I was discussing, the statement number one, commentary by Vyas. The chitta has five states and yoga and samadhi are synonyms. And this I missed out. I should have come back. When he says that yoga and samadhi can be in all the five states, this is a very significant statement by him. So I discussed these five states, but I forgot to come back here. So I'm coming back here. I'm what he's saying is something unthinkable. What he's saying is yoga and samadhi are synonyms, and that can be attained in all these five states of chitta. Now there is a huge contradiction. Patanjali in the next statement is going to say that yoga is attained when chitta is in the state, the final fifth state. But Vyas is saying in all the five states, yoga can be attained. This is a huge contradiction. What is the meaning of it? The meaning is following, as far as I am concerned, I can be in union with him only when I am in the Niruddha state, Chittavitti Niruddha, as it is described in the second statement. As far as I am concerned, I have to learn the practice, the ideas and knowledge and practice, and bring my Chitta to the Niruddha state to be with him. You know, This is what Patanjali is saying. But Vyas is saying, yoga can be attained in all the five states. Now the way to reconcile is the following. It is union of me with him, that supreme consciousness. If I wish to be with him, I can be with him only when I bring my chit into new this state, blank state. But now this is the second part. If that Supreme Consciousness wishes to be with me, then it can do in any of the five states. That is the meaning. That's what Vyas is saying. So Vyas, what, for example, say, let's take a case of uh, Newton. He is relaxing in an orchard and he sees an apple falling. Of course, this is not a thoroughly final stage of samadhi, but we call it as vitak sampajyat yog. Means there is an intuitive knowledge related to the outer world kind of a thing. The worldly functions, the gravitational force of the earth. It is pulling the apple around it towards its center. Now he is not in formal meditation or such thing, but the one who wants to give him that flash of intuitive knowledge, of course he is relatively relaxed, but one who wants to give that supreme consciousness, that gives him. So he can give you, or he can be in union with you, he can take in you in his fold, in you being in either of these five states. So that was the point I wanted to say with regard to statement number one. Now I go to Bhoj and about a comment he has made, which he has made in the context of second statement, but I might as well show you now. The term was Sarvapani Namdha. He's talking about Chitta Bhumi Nam. So, you know, that's why it is related to what we have just now talked. 
फाइव स्टेट्स ऑफ चित्त बट देन ही सेंग सर्व प्राणी नाम धर्म सो आई हैव सेड वी ह्यूमन बींग्स कैन बी टेकन इन इज फोल्ड इन एनी ऑफ दिस एट इट इज एट हिज प्लेजर नाउ ही सेंग द सेम थिंग कैन हैपन is happening to all other species is not just for the human beings so he is making a very strong statement about what we talk about instinctive knowledge so when it comes to instinctive knowledge other species are as if permanently in yog with him because they are their functions are determined by that supreme consciousness they are going by natural instincts and that is what is the basis of what bhoj is writing here chitta bhumi naam sarva prani naam tha okay let's move on second statement of here patanjali yoga chitta vritti nirodha of course i am sure all of you are quite familiar with it this is has been four times yoga we know that is the title of the book and we have seen its literal meaning is union chitt is our particular mind that component of mind that we always observe that is closest to me otherwise that is buddhi but assuming i am relatively i have subdued all the functions of buddhi now it is in its chitt mode in latent mode vritti vritti means actually whatever is business whatever it is supposed to do like my business of my eyes is to see business of my ears is to hear the sounds in the same manner chitt has certain functions this is that's what it is supposed to do that is chitt vritti it is supposed to display something to me of course it does it in two ways one is the real life pictures from the world if my eyes and ears are open other five three senses <coughs> then it displays about all the variety of worldly objects their characteristics in terms of sight sound smell taste and touch but when i am not so much interested in remaining connected with the outside world then all my sense organs are shut the doors our so called manas is also disengaged our sense organs are not functioning so it doesn't have to bring any data in word doesn't have to fetch any data now it is only ankara and buddhi ankara has all the past data so that keeps throwing in that most of us know it when we sit for meditation close our eyes then there is a kind of a procession something keeps coming on our chit of course if we begin to begin to entertain those images then we are in the buddhi level if we are careful not to entertain those images and wait for them to disappear then we are at least in the chitta mode so what that is what is chitta vritti it can be live from the world or it can be in the playback mode from the ahankar and that certainly we are familiar when we sleep in the night and have dreams then it is obviously the system is more like a chitta because we are not intellectually processing all that but it is a procession one after another so that is also coming from ahankar and not from the outside world so these are all the chitta vrittis and we have seen five states of chitta and now the final his fourth term is nirod to subdue them so chitta displays something and we want to say we want to switch it off the inner tv so to say otherwise it keeps showing something so that is what is your description definition of your yoga chitta vritti nirodha the third statement 
I don't think I will use uh, Vyas Commenti much. You know, we want to make the course very compact. So once in a while. So the third statement is saying, Tada Deshtu Swarupe Avasthanam. Tada means then. Deshtu means the observer. Swarup is in own self. What is my true self? The next statement will say, when I am not seeing my own self, you know, but he's saying, when your chitvitti have been thoroughly subdued, then the observer is, avasthanam is established in his own self. My true self is my consciousness, that which is unmanifest. You know, buddhi is made out of matter, which is going through all the manifestations, what is called Painamita. You know, it, it is always fluctuating. And that is happening because it is what is called Tigunatmak. It has three modes, Sattva, Ajas, and Tamas, and they are always flickering. So that gives rise to changes, manifestations. So that is what is what my buddhi is made up of. But as far as I am concerned, me, the observer, I am actually unchanged. I stay as I am. But I have a very distinct characteristic, what is called consciousness. So due to that consciousness, I become aware of what my buddhi or chitta is displaying. But now that my chitta is blank, you know, that's what's happening. Statement number two said, if I have brought my chit into new the state, so that is one state higher than Ikage state, one pointed state. If I have brought it, then I am absorbed in my own self. Then that is kind of self realization. Otherwise, I am just busy watching what is happening in front of me, displayed by chit. Statement number four is saying if yoga has not been achieved. So here the statement is vritti sarupyam itayatya. The statement is about the observer, dashta. The observer is, self is established in its own self when all the vrittis are subdued. But this statement here means, itayatta means otherwise, if the chitvitti are not subdued, then what happens? Vritti sarupyam, then this observer thinks as if I am like this chitvitti. You know, this observer begins to feel like that, which is a wrong notion, but that is what actually clay says, you know, that is what is with the wrong knowledge and all that. That's why we are in this world. So what he's saying is, if you have not thoroughly subdued the chittavitis, then the observer is behaving as if the chittavitti is its own self. He, he embraces what is happening here. This embracing is, is at two levels. One is he thinks this is what it is, and he absorbs that knowledge. This is fine. That is bound to happen, that nobody can stop it. So that Vyas is saying, buddhi pati samvedi. If something appears here, then this push, the consciousness automatically knows it. That is what is described in statement number four. But the other level is at the second level when he thinks this is happening to me. You know, the changes that are happening in buddhi, he thinks it is happening to me. That is now, the knowledge has become experience now. So please remember this distinction. Whatever is displayed by chit is automatically known by the purush, the self. That is what is the meaning of statement number four. But that event that is being 
displayed by chit does not have to become bhog or experience you know that is at a second level of attachment when he says as if this is happening to me so please remember buddhi vetti or chit vetti is automatically jnan vetti knowledge is automatically bringing knowledge to the self that nobody can get away from but it doesn't have to be an experience like i eat a banana the taste of banana is brought to the buddhi level and i get to know it but its characterization somehow say in the past i like the banana and i say this is the same test that i had previously and i am enjoying it now enjoying the taste of the banana is second level when you allow it to become experience so that is not automatic please remember this is very significant knowledge does not have to become experience knowledge is bound to be there once it is at buddhi but it does not have to become has to become experience for you and when it becomes when it came from clash so all this we will see in the next statement so statement number 4 is merely saying that self gets to know what is being displayed by buddhi or chit i will i will use the word buddhi and chit as synonyms now statement number 5 is talking about these vittis our objective is to get rid of them but we have to know what they are because they are good as well as bad like at this point we are trying to learn philosophy of patanjali's philosophy of yog so the vittis are good ones we need to learn them and then only we will learn how to get away from all kinds of vittis but this is are good they are very relevant at this time so it's not that all chitvittis are bad at all times at this particular hour these chitvittis are very much required so that we understand patanjali's teaching so that is what is now brought out by statement number 5 vittaya is in plural there are infinite kinds of vittis is it not there are infinite kinds but patanjali and this statement was in sankhya second statement 33rd second chapter 33rd statement in sankhya also and we have seen it there exactly same so sankhya also said that kapil and here patanjali is saying the same thing borrowing it from sankhya what they are saying is with these are of infinite kinds you know every vetti is different less like ocean waves they yeah, all waves are different all clouds are different is it not they are all infinite kinds but still he categorizes them in five categories five groups so he is saying vittaya panch tayya there are five categories so because as i said automatically they are knowledge type so in the knowledge dimension he is putting into five boxes but then he says sometimes they are desirable like i am saying we are trying to learn patanjali's philosophy these are very desirable things the desirable ones are called aklishta and the undesirable one are called klishta so here the word klesh is merged here so if the vittis are originating from ahankar where klesh is residing klesh is a kind of deposit we have seen last week particular klesh was rag and dvesh they put us in the cycle of the world is it not so rag dvesh is going to be two members of clash they are three more members we'll see it later so when you are driven by clash the chitvitti is clashed but 
that is undesirable, that is going to disturb my learning of Patanjali's teaching. So like at this point, you may have some reminders from your mind. Some are desirable, some are undesirable, is it not? So the ones which are undesirable, they are disturbing your learning is in the category of clicked. And the ones which are not disturbing, they let you recall what you learned last week. They are in the category of aklishta. That has to come in your mind so you can relate what you are learning today. Is it not? But both these klisht or aklisht, desirable or undesirable, they are lead to the knowledge which are in five categories. Okay, let's move on. The next statement is Pramana, Vipaya, Vikalp, Nidya, Smriti. Those five categories are listed here. This is called Sanjya Sutta, means just giving out the names, not no description. Description will come later. And let me go quick if I can complete this portion today from statement 6 to 11. Because we just want to have some basic ideas here. So first is Pamar. Pamar is what is right knowledge. So as I said here, the Chitvitti is automatically knowledge and that knowledge can be of five kinds. Pamar is the correct knowledge. Most of the time we are getting correct knowledge. That is Pamar. Now Pamar has three subdivisions. Pratyaksh, Anuman, Agama, Pamarani. This is plural of Pamar. So he's saying there are three ways to get kayak knowledge. Pratyaksh is direct perception. You know, we have five senses. Like at this point, I see it is raining. So the water drops are falling from the sky to the, I can see from my window, is it? It is raining, indeed it is raining. This is direct perception. This is kayak knowledge. That is why it is pamar. Then he says, second subcategory is anuman, inference. Of course, there have been times in my life when I was in the open fields and I saw it was in. Then what did I notice? That whenever it rains, there are clouds up in the sky. At this moment, through my window, I can see the rain, but not the clouds. But then I make an inference. If there is a rain, there must be clouds. So my inference seal knowledge that there are clouds up in the sky, which I am not able to perceive directly but I am making an inference, is also happens to be kayak knowledge, is it not? So he's saying Anuman, inferential knowledge, is also in the category of kayak knowledge. The third is Agam, which is called also as Shabda Pramar. Somebody, is, somebody who is a witness and his testimony, Somebody is saying, I am talking to my daughter in London, say. she is saying it is raining in London, in her house, near her home. I believe it. Then I tell somebody else, at this point it is raining in London, because to me this is a kayak knowledge. But I have not direct perception of what is happening in London. I have not made any inference. I have heard it from somebody who is witnessing and I trust that testimony, is it not? So we get the true knowledge by three possible means. Of course, there is a characterization. There is a kind of category here in subcategory. Pratyaksh is more powerful, is it not? For example, they talk like Vyasu is going to talk 
I don't go into those details at this point. They like I elated, then with the clouds, they elate smoke with fire. So they say whenever there is smoke, there is fire. Yes, that is true. If there is smoke, there has to be fire. There are certain fire, you know, from a combustion point of view, pre mixed flame, like in your kitchen burner, where the propane and air is already mixed, then it is blue flame, then you don't see much smoke, is it not? So there can be flame without smoke. But if there is a smoke, there has to be fire. So that is what the argument goes. So now Vyas is going to tell us, if you see smoke coming out from the behind of a hill, then you in make an inference, there is fire behind the hill, which you cannot see. So there is no direct perception of the fire from this side of the hill. But you make an inference because you have direct perception of the smoke. But your idea of the fire is not specific. You don't know the specificity of the fire. How much wide area, how big are the flames, etc. One who is on the other side of the hill, he can do the direct perception of the fire. He has the pratyaksha knowledge. And his knowledge is better than yours. Because you have just general idea, vague idea, that there is a fire. You don't know how much area is spread over fire and how high the flames are going. The other person has it, who is having. So what he's saying is, Anuman is weaker than, not weaker, it is also Paman, it is correct knowledge, but it does not give you all the parameters of the object, you just have a general idea. So that is called Samanya and not specific. Okay, and same is true about Shabda. Shabda doesn't even give you the specificity of the smoke. It just tells you there was smoke, there was fire, that's it. You at least can see if the smoke is rising upward or is bending or smoke, that channel is how big, so on and so forth. So though they are all three pramad, kayak knowledge, but there is degree is slightly, how much details you know, that is slightly different. The second vipaya is mithyajanam. A tadrupam pratishtam. Mithyajan means wrong knowledge. Wrong knowledge is characterized as vipaya. Yeah. You know, yes, we are not interested in wrong knowledge, but our our buddhi, our sometimes, for example, it is darkness, and you may make an inference. You may think this is a human being outside standing. But in the next morning, you see, this was a pillar, not a human being. So in darkness, you mistook a pillar as a human being, is it not? Or due to long distance, or due to some other external factors, or could be internal factors. You were, say, inebriated, you know, if you drink something too much or whatever it is, you know, you mistake something. X says Y, is it not? So that sort of a wrong knowledge is mithyaja. So that also can appear on your buddhi or chitta. So, but you get to know it and you test it, but this happens to be wrong. The third is vikalpa. He is describing at shabda jyan anupati vastu shunyo vikalpa. Now this is third unusual category. This is neither kayak knowledge nor wrong something in between, but it is in vogue. You know, like we say, sun is rising. These words have a specific meaning, but even early morning, actually sun is not rising. What actually is happening is earth is rotating in such a manner that it appears to you, otherwise sun was not appearing to you, it was darkness. But now your part of the earth 
is in front of the sun, you are able to see the sun. Sun is where it was. Only the earth is revolving. And because of its rotation, you are able to see the sun, is it not? So the word sun is rising is incorrect. But we cannot put it in the second category of Vipaya. It is wrong now. Because this is how we convey some ideas. But it is not also Pamad, it is not correct knowledge. So Patanjali puts it in the third category, it's called Vikal. So the word meaning of this statement is if you take these words literally, there is no corresponding object in the world. But the Vastu Shunyo, there is no such thing in the world that reflects the words one-to-one -one correspondence. But the meaning is still the speaker has said it and the listener gets the idea what he's saying. Is it not? The third, fourth is Nidya, deep sleep. You know, that is also a Vritti. Otherwise, somebody may say, deep in sleep, Shushupti, I am Chitvetti is not there, it is blank, so I am in yoga or samadhi. Patanjali is ejecting that sort of a possibility. He says, you think there is no vetti, but actually there is another vetti there, that is a nidya vetti. So nidya is a vetti and the term shushukti is your state. Now what is this nidya vetti? This is a very some powerful some powerful force does it. Does it. What does he do? What he does is he wants to give you good rest. So he makes a total blackout. He paints your chitra absolute black so that nothing can appear. Just imagine you go in the cinema hall, absolute black curtain. No cinema will be visible there, is it not? So something like that, that some superior force has placed it and is now your Nidya Vritti. But that also is not desirable when you want to be in you. It's good to have it in the night to get good rest for the body and mind. But it is a Vritti as far as Patanjali's philosophy of yoga is concerned. What is the word meaning here? Abhav Patya Alambana Vetti Nidya. So he's using the word Vetti again here to emphasize this is a Chitta Vetti. What it does is the support is there, Chitta is very much there, Alamban is there, but nothing is visible here. Abhav Patya. Nothing is visible there. Even deems are not this. But there is a Vetti, he calls it as Nidya Vetti. So that also will come under Chitta Vetti Niyodha. I need to remove it. So sometimes in meditation, some people, you know, feel a jerk of sleep. Sleep overtakes them. So of course you can, there is a message, you need some sleep there, but that sleep will not be counted as your. Finally, the statement 11, Anubhut Vishaya or some Pramosha Smithi. Smithi can be translated as memory. So what he's saying is sometimes you are just retrieving the data from your Ankar device and that appears here. So that's what I said, playback, is it not? So you playback. So in the TV, you see some live news and sometimes you see it playback. That's what our inner TV does. And when you want to switch it off, we have to switch off in both the modes. So Anubhut Vishaya or Sampamosha Smith. So this was statement number 11. So today we have covered Chitvetti Nyod. If we are not in that state, Vitti Sayupya Mithayatya, that Vitti gets to know by the Purush, the owner, and these Vittis in the day-to-day -day life is of five times and that five categories is based on quality of knowledge, very correct knowledge, 
wrong knowledge, something in between, something I am dormant, somebody saying something, but I am in deep sleep, I don't get any knowledge. And then some past knowledge I am achieving. So we'll move on from here next week and have a good time. Sorry, we are, I don't have to say that now. I want, uh, I have that slide. Sorry about that. We want some practice here. Yeah. I am taking more time than I had planned. That is my usual problem. But we want to have a short practice. So short practice, the same slide, which we did, I think, last week we couldn't do it probably. Yeah. But week before that, we recited Gayatri Mantra. And that is the slide. And now we are familiar with the difference between Buddhi and Chitta. So this is another way to look at it. The outer yoga, namely body posture, deep breathing, and oil recitation. Corresponding to asan, pranayam, pratyaha. They are outer yoga, peripheral yoga. Here our buddhi is functioning as buddhi. We are retrieving our consciousness inward from andamaya course, the outermost layer, pranamaya course, the pranic breathing layer, and this is manomaya course mind which does the action activity. So here is the speaking part. All these are three layers outside. Now we get into Vijayan my course, the fourth. And finally, if I succeed in step number six, I will be in Ananda my course, is it not? So with respect to these five layers, this is what the journey is. What I'm trying to tell you is, here, the buddhi is working as buddhi. Now, when we go from pratyaha to dharana, there is a kind of a dual jump. Please understand it. First is, I want to get away from buddhi's thinking intellectual operations. Sorry, let me say again. I want to get from manomaya course to vijyanmaya. So, outer mind, I am leaving behind. I want to jump to inner mind where buddhi is there. That is jump number one. Implicitly dual jump in the sense, I want to do not work at the level of buddhi, but level of chitta. So please remember that is why it is challenging to go from pratyaha to dharana. You are making two jumps side, but Patanjali is aware of this difficulty. That's why he gives us two steps, dharana and dhyan, to manage our vijyan my course. So let me say it again. Here, buddhi is working as buddhi. And when I want to cross over to dharana, first is I want to get away from mano my course to vijyan my course. But you could be in vijyan my course and do all kinds of thinking. No, that is not allowed. So you want to jump Manomai course to Vijayan my course and together you want to bring down your intellects, Buddhist functions at the latent level, minimum level of Chitta. So that was, now we can understand it better. I will put, a, I know I have exceeded already two minutes. I will put a timer just six minutes only. But I will, those six minutes will be effective when we come to step four. So let's follow all these steps. So make a comfortable posture. Get away from all kinds of stress, etc. And if possible, a mild smile on your face. That is our step number one, the right kind of posture. Now we do three samantak pranayam. Each breathing cycle will have four phases. In phase two and phase four, we will mentally recite short mantra. 
three of them, here it begins. D breathe out. Now the system is airtight. And we recite Om Mu Om Mu Deep breathe in. Now we hold the breath within and recite Om Mu Om Mu Om Swa Om Maha Om Jana Om Tapa. That was first cycle. Now breathe out, second cycle. Hold the breath out and recite Om Bhu Om Bhu Deep breathe in. Now hold it within. Om Bhu Om Bhu Om Swaha Om Maha Om Jala Om Tapas. Third and final cycle. Deep breathe out. Hold it out. Om Bhu Om Bhu Om Deep breathe in. Hold it within. Om Bhu Om Bhu Om That completes the step number two. Pranayam. We have disciplined our breathing. Now we don't look back. We don't look back at our body. Know about our breathing. We are confident our breathing will work in its automated mode. As it functions in our sleep also. Now we are in step three, namely Pratyaha. We have said Gayatri Man three times. Gradually diminishing one. And then we recite that sound Pranodhvani. Let's recite Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhuvaswa Tatsavitur Bhagodevasya Dimahi Dio Yona Pachodaya Om Vashwa Tatsavitu Vinyam Bhago Devasya Dimahi Dio Yona Ajodaya Omu Yuhuwa Swaha Tatsavitu Yuhuwa Nyam
Okay, that completes our session number eight. From my point of view, if there are any questions, we can take up. Acharji is not a question, but uh, uh, just keeping things in a very serial, what you have taught is, uh, if I just make a statement and, you know, sometimes uh, it confuses me personally. So I start from that Purush, three parts, Gyan, Karma, and Bhog. Now the experiences of Gyan, Karma, and Bhog are Sanskar. From Sanskar, we get Vrittis. And Vrittis are either Klist or Aklist. And they are of five kinds. This is what you've taught us. Am I correct in my thoughts? Yeah. Even a Klist Vritti may be may yeah. fall into one of the five. And our list also may fall into one. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Acharya. Uh, Acharya. Your sound is started off, but then it's missing. Aapki sound is missing. I'm trying to understand between yeah. Nirudh and Nirodh. Nirudh means subduing it, bringing it to non-existent state. Okay, and Nirodh? Nirodh is a, is a I, I would say that is a, Nirodh means a state of Nirodh. Nirodh mean, mean a verb as well as noun. Mm -hmm. Nirodh is a particular state when it has been thoroughly subdued. Right. And, and uh, doing it is to do Nirodh Karna. Matlab, uh, like, like a therapy? A that can be like a verb, yeah. Okay, Dhanyavad. Okay. I have just an observation from the, the I think it was Boj commentary, where he talked about uh, you can be in yoga in all the various states of your mind. Uh, if if uh, the, the supreme being, you know, wants to be with you effectively, that's what you said. And I, uh, you know, hesitate to say this, but I think I understand that in terms of, you know, if you go for a walk in a field, you know, somewhere in nature, if you get away from the houses, offices, concrete, and you just go into nature, you know, grass, trees, birds, this kind of thing, then sometimes I can feel that sensation. It's almost, if I, it's almost as if I can feel the energy from the nature that surrounds me, if you like. And it feels very similar to how I feel in a deep state of meditation. And I think that's also, assuming that's what's happening there, possibly, I don't know. But I think it's also a reason why a lot of people struggle with this kind of meditation. If you think about, <clears throat> especially in the West, you know, the UK and America and the cities, most of the time we're kind of bounded by these concrete boxes or bricks and walls and pavements. And we don't have much nature around us. We're not in a natural environment. And it almost feels to me as if those kinds of structures, they just can't hold that sort of energy that, that is what we're trying to reach out to. Um, and we can't get that same sense of, of calm and peacefulness and joyfulness when we're surrounded by these, you know, these concrete structures. And it just strikes me that that's kind of a very modern day thing that we're, we're now experiencing. And again, it takes us away from from the direction of of yoga if you like where we're trying you know we're kind of pushing ourselves into this artificial construct of of living environment taking us away from nature and it just feels to me like the more closer you can get to nature the more you can involve nature in your life and try to you know pull yourself away from the the kind of nine to five office box uh, kind of existence if you like i think it 
it just makes it more easier to connect with that kind of energy. Um, you know, I'm using that phrase, connect with energy, but it kind of feels to me like when you meditate, sometimes you're trying to connect to a different kind of field of energy, if you like. Um, so that's just interesting when Boj uh, pointed that out in his commentary. It kind of makes some sense in terms of how I've experienced you know, my own life. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. What we discussed was the union that yoga and samadhi, union of two. From my side, I have to make certain effort. That is what Patanjali is teaching. He, the, the supreme conscious, if he wants to give me a flash of some new idea, it can happen in any of those five states, you know. Now, any of those marks are very valuable. That supreme, the nature, what we call nature, is nothing but manifestation of that force. So more we are in natural surroundings that is going to, you know, enhance the possibility of our being with him, isn't it? So indeed, there are some discussions that if we are in the natural surrounding, it may be very easier to practice your meditation, etc. Yeah, it's definitely. But uh, Acharya has Patanjali specifically mentioned about, uh, you know, the place you should go or the kind of seat. I, I, I'm going a little out of the context in chapter 6 of Gita when uh, Krishna is giving uh, you know his his wisdom of yoga to Arjun he he advises him that they should one should go to a jungle a secluded place jungle and then that asan or that seat should not be neither too high or too low it should have grass and a cover you know, this kind of, uh, I mean, it's just an in indication, but I was just thinking whether either uh, Kapil or Patanjali, have they specified anything regarding this? No, I, I am not quite aware of. Thank you, you. But yes, last week we looked at that Manusmiti Shlok, Apam Samipe. Then in that Shlok, this was their go to secluded wooded area. Near a water body and this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shweta Upanishad also talks. It depends. They are they are money. Indeed, Vedas say that, like in Yajur Veda, Upavaya Girinam Sangame Chanadi Nam Dia Vipyavajayate, meaning in the valleys and in the confluence of the rivers, your <laughs> buddhi is more receptive. So there are statements, but I am unable to recall if they are specifically in Sankhya or Yoga, because they are, these books are more on Sutta formulation, so they don't yeah. go into those details much. Acharyaji, I have a question. Yes. I just wanted to know that uh, the relationship between Vritti and Sanskar, Sanskars are imprint and Vritti are our current nature or current activities we are doing, right? The attitude we have towards life. So, how they are related? Does Riti make sanskars or sanskars bring the Ritis to us? Like, how do we connect with these two things? Well, sanskar actually is the past. You know, Riti is a very general term. Anything like a, a student's Riti is to study. You know, Riti means anything, anybody doing anything or any machine Actually. doing anything. Now, in this context, uh, we are concerned with Chitta Vritti because, you know, me as an observer, I am always observing what my buddhi or Chitta is doing. So whatever is happening there is buddhi Vritti or Chitta Vritti. Okay, now what we have learned from Sankh is the unit next to buddhi is Ahankar, you know. Now there is a mechanism somehow, that's how things work. This device, namely Ahankar, makes a copy of whatever has appeared here. You know, and that copy is called Sanskar. Okay. So 
So now the cycle is like this. If there is a chitvetti, its copy becomes sanskar. And now we have been talking about buddhi, chitta, etc. So what happens is once there is a sanskar in the ankar unit, it pops out, you know, somehow it sends out, you know, it sends an image. So that sanskar is making a vritti here. The, this vritti again will make a sanskar. Okay. Is it not? This is so, how you learn driving, for example. Yeah, so vritti is image, right? The first time you are very consciously driving. So all these actions are mm. making an impression. They are the sanskar. When you have done this driving five years, now those sanskars, they have, you can drive a car almost in autopilot. Is it not? So anything that we do here makes a copy. But of course, certain copies may fade away. But saying that there is a sanskar here, now that also sends you a vritti. And uh, so the life goes on. This is a cyclic phenomenon. So we have to be very careful when we're driving our car all the time, not one time that we get used to it. So we do any kind of vritti, right? So that's the message is here now. Well, the, you know, the, that example was being given to say it's beautiful. that why practice makes one perfect? Because practice is not getting lost. It is making impressions in your second device. Yeah. That's why we give so much importance to practice. Mm -hmm. Now, once you have made a practice, now that becomes your kind of a signature. Why? Because you drive in a particular manner. Now those sanskars bring out here and you are driving the way you have been driving in the past, is it not? Everybody drives the way he has been he has programmed his own driving, is it not? Yeah. So that his whole program of driving is stored in the device called a car. Mm -hmm. And when you are sitting on the driver's seat, that sends the vittis that help you drive easily, is it not? So this is related, this example is related to action mode. This is same thing works in the knowledge mode. Same thing works in the experience board, like what Kavinji just now said, Jian, Bog, and Kal. Yeah. Whatever appears here will have an impatience there. So, you know, you have certain likes, you have certain ideas, you hear something, then you make a, you don't take much time because you have certain ideas that India is like this. If some news comes about India, you quickly come to a conclusion, is it not? Because you have some past ideas. So that's what we become sometimes our bias and prejudice. Is it? Mm -hmm. So all this is complex phenomena, but our past is there that mixes with the present and then it is useful in the sense. Otherwise, I will have to do everything, he work everything. So you don't have to rediscover the wheel again and again. But there are negative sides, positive. This is a very complex psychology we are talking about, uh, yeah. uh, human mind. But this is the language of our Patanjali and Kapil, Vritis and Sanskar. Uh, Acharya ji. Thank you so much. Acharya ji. Yes, please. It might seem a question like, uh, after listening to the whole Ramayan, somebody asks who was Ram, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm still asking because I'm a bit uh, deluded here. Action is propelled by intellect. Am I right in this one? Action is decided by what you intellect, are not doing. Propelled. So propelled like we by- saw Tat Kayam Dharmadi. Mm -hmm. This is the discriminative tool. Yes, so the, it is- so it so is then it is, it takes decision in the sense the incoming knowledge is ascertained. Is it a rose flower or marigold? This is in the knowledge direction. But same thing is in action. Should I pluck it or not pluck it? 
that is also decided here. Yes. You say that it is the beauty is for everybody. If I take it away, this flower, then I am doing something wrong. This is not my personal property. This is public place. You know, you are thinking all this and taking a decision that I, I love this flower, I like it, but I will not pluck it. Is it wrong? So, it is so action, the way you do it, this way or that way, is also decided here. But from where the action is propelled? Is it propelled from the soul that I want to do an action by icha or by desire? Well, in the decision-making process, your past is playing its role, is it not? Yeah, yeah, okay. And suppose something you have done, that's what we were discussing in the practice part. Suppose some action has been done repeatedly again and again. Now when the same circumstance reappears, you do not take that long to decide your action. But the you desire... Know, you, uh, that, that's what it becomes your habit. So... So, you know, we are certain, there are many things we are, habitually we are doing it. Like in your home, if you rise from your seat to make a cup of tea, there is a, you may even be able to end up in the kitchen, even as a blind or not as a blind, maybe talking to somebody on the phone, but you are walking and your feet go to the kitchen and you, one hand you, take out a tea bag and you start doing things because you are so much, you have been doing this so many times. Here you are, that we are talking now subconscious actions. So you may say, I did it subconsciously. I did not take that conscious decision. But then even the, the reason it has become subconscious is because consciously you did it in the past many times, you know. No, no, uh, Acharya ji, my question is from where the action, the desire which comes for the action, like in this example, the desire that I should have a cup of tea, from where it, from where it starts, is it starts in my, uh, from my... The desire soul? is from your anka uh, unit. Of course, there is a probably... Uh, if it was a genuine hunger or thirst, you know, then the body has deficiency in something. That signal comes from the brain. So that is coming from outer. In our philosophy, brain and body are the outer world. So, you know, so, all this, that is Andamaya and Pranamaya course. So now the this... mind begins from Manomaya and Vijayanamaya course. So some signals are coming. That body is getting dehydrated. Of course, tea is a slight luxury. Let's think of glass of water. So then uh, the signal is coming from the outer domain body. There is a deficiency of water. Body is getting dehydrated. Now that signal comes somewhere out of these five senses. I don't know which signal will pick up. So, Chari, but does it the mean information that? comes that body demands water. Is it or dehydrated, then you have the knowledge that when body is dehydrated, I am feeling the thirst. So you feel actually the thirst, but then from your old knowledge, which is residing in Ahankara, you know, thirst is quenched by water. So, so that never becomes tasted. a need no, or desire, it depends so on whatever you say, for a glass of water. Is there no role of uh, our soul? That's what I was trying to read. What is the role of soul in our activities in our body? That's what okay, my I, I see what you are aiming at. I can see it now. Okay. Yeah. I understand that. No, yeah. finally, this intellectual thinking gives you various options, you know. If you do this, this will happen. If you do this, that will happen. This is Finally, you exercise your choice. That is where the self comes into. So the self self comes into, but it's not that, as they say, that the soul has made the icha. You know, when comes the the qualities of the soul, uh, that uh, it, icha priyatn, and these are the comes. So the soul's role is nowhere in this 
whole theory of action o only purush it, it was its will power it was its will power to select one of the many options that intellect presented so for example you know, when you do intellectual thinking <coughs> you are weighing many many options so that is the decision when i make the decision with the help of the intellect but my point was the soul icha priyatna wo jo unka part aata hai and the soul is uh, um, well if you talk in that language the whole system action actually is the attribute of consciousness you know jisko bolte hai na jab tak to bhokta to karta i am starting from yeah that is a property characteristic of the soul these are system that enable it to do it huh, yeah this is the system the car is moving but the car as a system is being driven by a conscious being who is the master of the vehicle is it not who is the driver so like in the car the driver is the driver actually at his will power at his will the car is moving in the same manner in this system the soul is the driver fine it is he has the ability to know feel and do body and mind etc all make it happen enable it happen yeah that is what i want to slightly understand more that soul's part of and uh, when it is said that uh, soul does not come in the uh, in, in the binding soul is pure uh so who becomes the uh, distorted or uh, what you call it uh, malinta kahan aati hai shuddhta shuddh soul hoti hai you know the whole problem is not the problem you know this is how the human beings function okay if you look back your 24 hours as a common man we were some moment we were happy joyous some moment that we were sad some are there in finite emotional makeups of any human being if you look at past even few minutes or say past 24 hours there are all sorts of fluctuations have taken place what uh, the philosopher is trying to tell us is uh, you the soul has not gone through any change whatsoever you have remained the same what has happened is has happened in your mind and because you are you think that whatever is happening to the mind is happening to you you feel it that way avidya you know that that's our makeup you know that's why he is trying to tell us that all the fluctuations are in mind because that only goes through changes you don't go through changes so they are trying to explain to us but why does it seem to us that i am happy and i am sad now as if i have undergone any change so they are trying to convince me you are the same actually all this is happening in your and this the way you have been tied with it so this whole philosophy has been built up to explain all these events that is what has raised the question when i read about vidya vidya uh, that, uh, just like kk ji said that vidya ji so that is where i went that if because there was this question that we are we we cannot be this is by this is not by nature uh, mukti and badh jo maine apna usme bhi chote se likha ke agar mukti hai uh, you know salvation may we have been some time and then we have no in in binding of this uh, uh, life and uh, so then who will become pure it is my soul will become pure when i will have the salvation and and that is where mm -hmm. the desire of salvation is coming by by the intrinsic nature of uh, my soul because so it wants to so it's not to... uh, 
It's not like that. I, I have not seen your write up yet. Mm. I haven't seen it yet. No, it was. But, it uh, was, I did not write. I just wrote this one that by nature I am. Uh, 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 I, I have seen the salvation, and that's why my because I have seen that Ananda and Norm, I want to have that salvation again. And it is not by nature, it is by nimit because of my karmas and because of my actions in my previous dharmas that I am in path and I can again become. Uh, so then my question is, who is that one becomes malign or wrong and how that can be pure, which is of course by upasana, as you said that, by meditation is the, the, the way yeah, yeah. and the webhar and question of the, what I do in my life, the way I act, the actions I do and the, you know, so, so that is the one. So that is when all that confusion started again, <laughs> all over again. You know, it's, a, what is it's, a, it's quite a complex stuff really. Yeah, takes, yeah. I, I may try to answer time. if you want. Okay, thank you, Sarahji. I, no. I, I definitely got But I will some. say that what you are saying is uh, the soul is uh, unmanifest. It doesn't go through any change. It's yeah. not that when it becomes pure, then it achieves salvation. It is always, but still we all, what you are saying you is become quite impure. correct. So what the part sense, of our... Uh, uh, yeah, it's our, all pure. the changes are in our mind. So even the impurity is in our mind. Mm -hmm. But since I am responsible for my mind, if somebody may say that as I, I have become impure, but actually those impurities are sticking to the mind, mind and they can be washed away. This is the mechanism of philosophy of Sankh and Yoga. They tell you how to wash them away, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, what can be washed. And then finally, there is a, some part that has to be burnt away, you know. <clears throat> So mm, yeah. all these mechanisms are told to us, and uh, but soul, technically speaking, doesn't go through any change whatsoever. Okay. But it is his baggage which he is responsible for. Mm. You know, he has, like I was saying, Anka is uh, all the past data that only I have collected it. So they are good and bad both. Good will help me. Bad, I firstly, I don't want to add any more bad data. You know, that's why we say, let's get away from Sakam curve. You know. So and the I, soul is always pure. Uh, once we are in Nishkam curve, let's practice meditation. Then things are washed away, burnt out, etc., etc. So, you know, Klesh is something we came up with, but we don't want to increase the ashuddhi burden that part so first is you know we don't want to go on the wrong curve mm. bad curve okay now the but good karma but good karma the... also brings reward so we do good karma now without attachment in a detached way nishkam karma okay so the laser book doesn't get new entries that is very important yeah. otherwise laser book gets a new entry I have to come in the world again. Yes. Now, I new entries are no more there, but I came in the world with some trace. That deposit has to be, and that is where Samadhi and all these are relevant. Um, the they will burn that thing. So the soul is always pure, and it is impure because of the seeds of karma attached to Ahankar. Do we understand like yeah, this? It's like, a, you know, in the bare body, I own nothing you know i have pockets only when i have clothes then i have a lot of dollars in my pocket etc etc and i may have liability also <laughs> so the real soul that's why i started this story is in 24 hours you went through ups and downs you know. now the problem is that's why in our sankhya diagram we remember Purush is next to Buddhi, mm -hmm. and Buddhi is funny. made out of the Gunatmak, Satvajas Tamas. That their interplay is making all these, as you know, three basic colors, namely red, green, and blue, they can give rise to infinite colors. Mm -hmm. And if they are properly 
mixed in the same proportion, it is pure white. So that's what Paketi is. Samyavastha Paketi means it's in equilibrium. But out of Paketi is made our buddhi, that is called Mahat, where Sattva Tamas can, of course it is rich in Sattva because it has to give me knowledge. So that is why it is designed to be rich in Sattva, but there are fluctuations. As a little child, I was always smiling most of the time, unless there was a problem. But now as we have grown up, our states are very much fluctuated. Now the Sattva Jastamas give rise to all kinds of varieties. But we think this is me, but I am the same, you know. So this linking between me and, and that is what is the bondage, you know. Yeah. So Achari Purush is to observe, the, right? Purush is just observe, but it's not interfering, right? Excuse me, say that again. Purush, Purush is just observing everything, whatever we are doing, but it is not interfering, it is not guiding us. So that was the story when Pem Benji, you know, it is difficult to visualize what is the role of soul if Intellect is doing everything. What is the role of soul? That's what her question was. You know. Finally, we have to look at it. Intellect as my private sakete, okay. who is presenting several options, and you are finally selecting one of them. Now, what happens in our day-to-day -day life is we delegate more and more authority to our sakete. And now that authority is becoming, is working like a subconscious functions. And then we complain that, you know, a smoker is now subconsciously smoking. Or somebody who is used to go to pub from his office on returning home, his feet just take him to the pub, you know. And his wife asks, why are you so late? He says, he can <laughs> say you know, subconsciously, not, I go I'm, there, but he I'm has to take the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not joking. You know, this is how every authority is with us, but we implicitly delegate authority to our secretary. And more and more things now, secretary is deciding now. Now it begins to appear to us is, where is my authority? You know? So now when you practice meditation, you are taking the ownership of your intellect, isn't it? You bring it calm down. So now you will be able to see, okay, I can be detached from these events. Otherwise I was too much attached to these events. All these things you will be able to notice as you begin to practice meditation. Those, so you know, you will be able to critically examine your own mind. When I sit for meditation, I want to have the chitvetti of only mental excitation of home. But why is this other chitvetti coming? If you analyze it, then you will get certain answers, you know. So it is for you to train your mind, and that's where your higher power will come. You know, the fact that we can make some progress in meditation. It means I am taking some ownership of my mind, isn't it? So, Acharya I can ask it to subdue. Come. I can ask it to come, so, and when so. it does it, you will feel it. You know, look. When I sit for meditation, in relatively less time, I am able to bring my mind calm. So, all this is a matter of degree, is it? Acharya but in the chapter, we will not go that far. The chapter begins with. And all that. So, what he's saying is the salvation or liberation, not that one, that liberation is upon death, but say disconnection from mind. He says that it can come because you have brought something from your previous life. Then, second, he says, is Aushadi. <laughs> so, a drug addict also gets it to Chitvitti Nirod. He is also out of the world, is it not? But that is what is deep sleep also. So 
what he has done is he has uh, just made his all neural brain signals die out so as if somebody has switched off the main so then now is total dark here my tv is not working so that inner tv is switched off in a brutal manner and he is now attaining chitta vritti nirod you know but that chitta vritti nirod is not desirable so you are you can you can really feel it this is your will power this is what your soul has consciously decided that you want chitta vritti nirod not by administering a drug to your body but by learning patanjali's practice so Or, this is your power and you have exercised it is it yeah not? exercising authority you are exercising it otherwise there are many people everybody is after that same chitta vritti nirod look everybody but there are many people who are going after drugs because that chitta vritti nirod is a very good state where there is no dukh is it not why we do we like sushupti because there is no dukh when mind has no fluctuation that is everybody likes that but there is a wrong way to get it the right way is to learn how this system works and i will make it i will learn to switch off the inner tv but the way to go by drugs you just spoil the system you are just making the system haywire so when it comes to your conscious power taking decision so i hope you can see it this is where at that level you have taken the decision and at all such levels if you are not conscious that you are taking the decision that means subconsciously you had delegated it to your mind mm -hmm. and you can take back the authority and that's what meditation will help you Mm. acharya ji the third sutra i think is the best explanation of this whole confusion tada drishtu sarupen avastha nam unless we do yog we will not see ourselves to yeah. to switch off the laptop you know that's the stage we reach so, yeah that's why you know somebody may ask you what are you doing i think one answer is i want to know myself you know simple answer is this who i am yeah so this whole exercise becomes who i am you know oh. am i that mind or am i the soul and what am i what am i appended to what am i why am i appended to why this bondage all these you know when I you say who i am and that is my inquiry this will have no limits you know you want to know yourself फंक्शनिंग अपरेटर्स एज माई अंताकरण एंड बुद्धि एंड दैट इज वट इज वर्किंग ऑन द लेवल आई एम एट द वर्किंग हेयर इज माई सेल्फ माई मी एंड दिस ऑल द problems are in my functioning apparatus which my buddhi needs to be in proper manner with vidya and all that so that it can sort out the problems and take the proper action and reduce my uh, problems or impurities or uh, functioning apparatus is that the right way to understand or still not yeah it's all you know that's why they are called as kayan i think they yeah. are instruments Inner so set of instrument, body is outer set of instrument. Outer set of instrument, and, and inner uh, these instrument like vehicle gets uh, break down and all that yes. needs to be repaired, it's damaged, etc. So all these things It's happen with our set of instruments and anything. But, uh, Thank you, Jai. We Jared. are assured. I think the penny has dropped. Nothing ever changes with me. <laughs> I remain the same. Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Swabhav. Swabhav. It's interesting philosophy. but mm. uh, uh, we yeah. have to make use of it it is viable it is practical 
as long as, and it can help yes, you lead a balanced yes, life. Yes. After all, we have to, we need body and mind for positive progress. That's why there was at least and at least some are good and bad. So, you know, we want to balance it out properly. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll meet again. Thank you very much. 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 Sorry for being dumb. <laughs> no, no. You will again get confused. Every I week. I thought so many times I got it. And every, then it comes in. Every week you... This is Avidya. It, because of that, we think that we are mind. Whereas mind is for us. Yes. Mind is for us, but we think we are mind. <laughs> so that Bhog okay. Vritti has killed that, you know, everything. And But it's so beautiful and so confusing. Thank you. 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 Thank you.